Hey there, how are you doing everyone? This is Marcus and after a short break, a couple of days without a video, we are back with another episode of Mark Us on Top. So our current rating is 1785 and maybe we can actually break into the 1800s this episode, that would be kinda hype. So I had my last exam today and um, it went pretty decently I guess. So. That is good, I'm free now, no more university, at least for the next couple of weeks. Um, had a really busy day, um, two important phone calls, and yeah, like, after those finished, I can finally go back to producing some content. But um, as it seems, at the moment, no one out there. So, we're still using um, the team that was featured on the Nico Nico battle where um, Viera, the world champion from last season, played off against um, Sajun Park, of course, the world champion from 2014. And um, yeah, Sajun flew over the way over to Japan to participate in a tournament over there. And ooh, interesting team, but I'll talk about that in a little bit. So basically, Sajun used this team there. Um, I don't have the exact EV spreads, I don't know exactly what he used, but um, I tried to copy a little bit of what he had and mix it up with my own ideas. But um, I got a couple of more videos with him playing the team from the International Challenge where he had a similar team, so I made some changes. Most notably, I gave uh, Rayquaza the choice band, just how it was in Sajun's team as I figured out the full moveset. And I also gave Flamethrower to Togekiss to have a way to deal with Ferrothorn. But without any further ado, let's jump right into this battle against Mateo, who had a rating of 1657, I believe, with two interesting choices here in Nidoqueen and Jellicent. Has a Smirgo, so you gotta watch out for that, and I expect this to be Trick Room, definitely. So maybe we wanna bring Togekiss to under speed stuff, because this Togekiss I'm using is actually quiet. Um, Satan was using mo probably relaxed as he had the Rocky Helmet item, but he was very slow, so he could use that to counter Trick Room at least a little bit. Um, we could try to prevent Trick Room from going up with Korobet, and I think that's actually what we're trying to do. Um, and then I also kind of want to lead off with Kyogre, probably. Uh, but then things get a little bit tough. Yeah, if we lead with Kyogre, and then we have Rayquaza in the back, I guess. And we're going with Ferrothorn instead of Togekiss. Okay, so no um, flinches coming out this game, because I think Ferrothorn, especially like if my opponent gets the setup Trick Room, um, could be a viable member. Um, it can deal with the Jelly Sand, which um, like, I'm not even sure what Jelly Sand is like doing here. But maybe it has Water Absorb, so that would be something. Um, actually, my opponent is just leading straight up with that Jelly Sand and Dialga, both shiny. So my opponent got really, really lucky there. Oh, we only have shiny Crobat though. <laughs> so, um, Crobat obviously has the ability to just taunt something right there. But I'm not sure, like, what would you even run on a Jelly Sand? Um, like, would you run Mental Herb, for example? I don't know, that could be something. Um, also, something to consider is that my opponent could just go for the um, Trick Room with both of his mons, even if he does not have Mental Herb. And, yeah, if I taunt one, then the other one will definitely set up the Trick Room. But, yeah, it's always difficult, those type of decisions. And also, yeah, as I said, um, Water Absorb, definitely an option on that Jelly Scent. So, I'm thinking I will just go for the Chon there, onto the Jelly Scent. And I don't see why I should not fire off a Water Spout. I'm guessing he would set up the Trick Room. But if we can prevent that somehow, then that's fine, and Dialga is really a problem for this team to deal with. And yep, there is the Metal Herb. Um, could have gone for this uh, Super Fang onto the Dialga instead, that would have been good. Um, that, that probably wouldn't have picked up the KO either way. And Curse Body activating, so no Water Absorb or anything like that. And just the Flash Cannon coming out from Dialga onto the Crobat, which actually KOs with a critical hit, wow. Okay, so yeah, um, Dialga is really difficult to deal with um, with this team. And it's very important, I think, that you get off as much damage as possible. And Kyogre's Water Spout is not actually, like, the most... I don't know, like, it's not the worst attack in this metagame. So, now the question is, do we expect this Dialga to carry a Fire-type attack? Um, at the moment, there is the Heavy Rain still up, but, um... 
Yeah, my opponent does have the Groudon in the back, I would assume. And so they could switch Jelly Sand into the Groudon. Oh, I could I could make such a play. Okay, I think I'm Are you ready? Ooh, we could wow. That would be so sick if we pulled that off. So I'm switching in for Rothorn. Do we want to spot anything? I'm not sure if this will work. But what I can do here is switch Frothorn out into... I think I'm gonna do it. Switch it out into Rayquaza and actually scald the Jolly Sand, hoping for the ground to come in there. Okay, if that works, that would be so hype. So Frothorn switches out first, it's the slowest the respective, like, the fastest thing on the field. So let's see, is my opponent going to withdraw that jelly sand? Let's hope so. Oh, it goes for the pain split, what? That is definitely not what I expected there. Uh, that's not going to do too much damage to Dialga, uh, to the Rayquaza, but that Draco Meteor certainly is, oh my gosh. So he just went for the Draco there, maybe predicting me to go into Rayquaza, or he just doesn't have a better move to hit for Rothorn with, and just wanted to get off as much damage as possible. Uh, maybe we got outplayed right there, or maybe my opponent just didn't know what to do against Frothorn and was just waiting for his mons to both faint. But yeah, after that critical hit and losing Rayquaza, I think there is nothing we can do in this game anymore because my opponent's Groudon that he will most likely have in the back will just be able to yeah KO Frothorn and Kyogre can't do much against that either. So, what a sad game really. Mm-hmm. I mean, we can knock out the Jelly Sand with uh, the Power Whip. And then also Ice Beam the Dialga, I guess. Maybe he makes a mistake and actually withdraws Dialga. So if there's Groudon coming in, and it is, okay. So we will be able to at least get off of this Ice Beam and the shiny, the shiny Groudon as well. I gotta love it. Uh, especially the Primal one looks pretty neat. But, yeah, well. So, the shiny Groudon coming out here from my opponent as well. And, Desolate Land will rain. Now, let's see. If I can KO this Jolly Sand, and if Ice Beam does, like, a good chunk of damage to that Kyogre, uh, to that Groudon, um, I'm not sure if we can 2-hit KO this. Probably not. Maybe it's even, like, only a 4-hit KO if he's, like, really bulky. But, um, he's in a Trick Room team, so he should be bulky. Yeah, that doesn't do too much. But at least it gives us some kind of fighting chance, you know. So let's see. My opponent probably going to switch in their last one. As Dialga doesn't fare. Uh, but it doesn't really matter. I mean, he could also just go with Dialga and Draco Meteor into my Kyogre. So I think um, the only play I can make right here is to protect my Ferrothorn and Ice Beam the Groudon once more. Because Ferrothorn can definitely not take another, or like cannot take a fire type attack. So, yeah, let's just go for that. And maybe his Dialga goes for the Draco, but actually protects there. Not entirely sure what my opponent is going for there. Ooh, he sets up the Sword Dance. Wow, certainly not what I expected here. But I'm not sure if that is actually the correct play to make here. Because I will get off the Ice Beam with, Gra uh, with Kyogre. And. I'm no longer disabled, and Trick Room is still up, so if Power Web KOs this Groudon... Yeah, but then again, it probably doesn't KO him. Yeah, let's see, now nah, that's probably not going to be enough, but I have to go for it anyway, I think. So, or I could go for the Double Protect play. But, um, hmm. What could my opponent have in the back? Probably Kangaskhan, and then we just lose either way. So I guess I hope to I have to hope that I can KO his Groudon with Power Hip, maybe with like a critical hit or something. And then we could potentially win this game, but let's see. Power Hip just misses and Precipice Blades <laughs> avoids uh Ferrothorn avoids. But um that should be enough to um KO Kyogre as it is with another critical hit, but yeah, with combined with Draco Meteor, that would have been enough anyway. <sighs> yeah, so that's just one of those games. Um, yeah, like, <laughs> I don't know, Jelly Sand, not really what I expected, but then, like, 
um, after my water spout was disabled, I couldn't even go for that any longer. And then it just went downhill from there. Um, yeah, the, the turn that definitely decided the game was when I tried to make the play, make the read, that he would switch into his ground, which I think would have been a very reasonable choice um, for him. But he decided to go for the Draco Meteor and Pain Split onto my Ferrothorn. Yeah, probably he was just predicting me to go into Rayquaza. Like, there is no other way, basically, that this play makes any sense. But, yep, so that's it. And we lose the first game of this episode. And, yeah, kind of heartbreaking. But, um, I don't know. He got the shinies, so he got lucky with that. He got the crits, he got lucky with that. <laughs> what else can you say? So, um... Yeah, we didn't really get to see the choice band coming out onto the on the Rayquaza at all, basically. So let's see if we can make it work in the second game. So yeah, Sejon is actually using um, choice band Rayquaza, which is not something I've seen too often in like e Europe or in the US. And I'm um, not sure, but um, he's also presumably running it adamant with the adamant nature. So that can definitely do a lot of damage, like one hit KO Kyogre with Dragon Ascent, which is pretty crazy if you think about it. And um, yeah, so if he brings like his Rayquaza into position, then he can like follow me, stuff away with Togekiss, and then just dish out a lot of damage. Or he has Crobat and Weavile to also support that Rayquaza. Um, Weavile, of course, with Fake Out and Feint, and the Crobat with like Quick Guard and Tailwind for more speed control, since he's not Jolly once again. So, um, anything else that I think is interesting about this team? Um, hmm. Yeah, the Togekiss, I'm not sure what exactly the set was that he ended up with, but um, we did see Thunder Wave in the video on Nico Nico. And um, he also had, or supposedly had, Flamethrower in the International Challenge to deal with Brothorn. So I'm not entirely sure what that whole moveset is, but I just slapped both um, moves on there. Um, by the way, the comment of the day is more like a question of the day, um, where I would go for like to follow the Japanese scene besides Nico Nico. So well, um, actually, like I think yesterday night, um, Ryosuke Kozuke um, Kebebo was streaming over in Nico Nico. So um, I didn't get to watch it, but um, I heard some rumors about some <clears throat> level 50 Ho Oh with recover. But um, anyway, so. Um, yeah, that is, like, some, sometimes people just um, stream there, but um, it's, it's, like, it's very hard to navigate on there, and, um, yeah, like, I don't know, like, I'm not using Nico Nico too much, but um, what you can do is follow a couple of important people on Twitter, if you're using that. I will leave, um, a, like, some links in the description where you can check out some players that have, like, have done well in the past and that you um, should follow. Also, like, Esports Runner the Japanese website that covers like for all or, like for the big tournaments over there and so on. I will also link that in the description, so yeah, check that out definitely. So my opponent here um is rocking one of those standardish Ground and Xerneas teams. And let's see how well we can do here against that. Um Crobit is certainly nice in this matchup I think. As my opponent does not have like trick room for his moves or anything and we can just like taunt everything, um block moves from block fake outs from Kangaskhan and Leopard with um, quick guard, and that could be really nice. And then, mm, I also think leading Weavile is an interesting choice because we could like fake out and support the Crobat a little bit more. And in the back, I want to have Rayquaza and Kyogre. Now, I do think that Ferrothorn in rain would be really nice against my opponent's team, and I could also see Togekiss doing some work, but um, like with this. I don't know, with Weavile and Crobat, like, if you manage to get up Tailwind while one of them faints, and you can bring in Kyogre in, like, Tailwind, where you have the speed advantage, then you can really put a lot of pressure on those teams as, yeah, like, okay, my opponent has a Moongus and Salamence that resists water-type attacks, but I'm certain, like, generally Xerneas and Kyogre and his Growl, and they don't want to take any water-type attack, and, um, yeah. So we're actually facing Kangaskhan and Moongus, and I think we faced that in an earlier episode as well. So maybe that's what some of the Japanese players come up with to deal with those way over teams. Uh, the last time, what did we do? We did have Weavile and Kyogre. Was it with this team in the last episode? That's been a while. So anyway, I went for the fake out on the Amoongus and the opponents... Hmm. Or did they not have Kangaskhan? Did they protect the Kangaskhan? I don't even know. So, a play I could make is just go for the fake out on the Kangaskhan and taunt. 
But um, he could also just go for any attack with this Kangaskhan. It's always really difficult to decide what to do in this situation. Like my opponent could just go for the low kick and not in non-mega form, for example. I'm predicting me to go for the fake out there, but most people don't do that. And since some of like a lot of Weavile are carrying Focus Sash, people like generally want to Mega Evolve there. But um, we're actually abusing this right now and going for the fake out as we are Life Orb, so yeah, we don't even have the Sash. But let's see. Once again, a Taunt is coming out, but um, this time no Mental Herb coming out, which is really convenient and really nice. So my opponent's Amoongus is basically dead weight at this point, so he probably has to switch it out. So we could um, take advantage of that by going for um, a potential knockoff on that slot, predicting the Xerneas to come in um, to get rid of the power herb. So many herbs in which is C16. Or we could just um, go for the knockout on his Kangaskhan with Super Fang and Ice Punch, as that actually has a decent chance to KO him at the percentage he is. Um, and I think that's actually what I want to do. So I'm predicting him to be jolly and offensive. Because then we can just barely grab this KO right now. So he has to withdraw Amoongus. And um, my opponent's team doesn't have anything that is faster than Crobat. So we should be able to set up Tailwind the next turn. So as long as our Super Fang connects and unless our opponent is bulky with their Kangaskhan, Super Fang and Ice Punch should be able to knock it out. And then we can safely set up Tailwind afterwards and sweep with um, Rayquaza and Kyogre. At least that is the plan right now. So let's see, what does he do? Um, no Sucker Punch or anything coming out. So Super Fang does a decent amount. Ha ha ha. And Ice Punch picks up the KO. Nice. So Kangaskhan goes down and um, I'm not even sure if there's too much my opponent can do. Um, Xerneas is definitely a threat, but um, since we do have knockoff on this Weavile, we can just pretty safely go for the knockoff and prevent him from going for the Geomancy. But he actually decides to bring out his Amoongus once again. So I definitely want to set up the Tailwind, I think. Just in case. Um, like, we could also taunt the Amoongus and switch Weavile into Kyogre to get rid of, like, the Sun. And then he can't touch Crobat at all. Like, that is also something to consider. But... Yeah, I think we're just fine going for the Tailwind. To make sure we outspeed everything. And then I can also just go for... Uh, I could actually... No, uh, no, I don't need to. I can just... I guess I could... I'll just Ice Punch the Amoongus. Because why not? Okay, he goes for the Protect. I was thinking of, of going for the Feint, just in case my opponent is Focus Sash. But my opponent also has a Leopard in preview, and even if he's Focus Sash, we can just go for, like, Water Spout and um, Dragon Ascent to take it out. But my opponent goes for the Fire Punch on the Crobat, and that is going to knock him out with a critical hit. So right now we can pretty safely send in our Kyogre and go for the Ice Punch plus Water Spout play. Uh, that's probably not even enough to take out the Amoongus, though. Maybe I could have played that better. Maybe going for the Feint and Taunt into the Amoongus would have been better. But, um, yeah, Ikaiogre is not max speed or anything, since um, Sajun opted to go um, modest with um, a little bit of bulk to take some hits better, I think. Mm, but, um, yeah, I mean, it's still Primal Kyogre, come on, so... That water spout should do a good chunk of damage. Or maybe he's just um, withdrawing his crowd anyway. But um, yeah, I do think we just go for the ice punch and water spout play. And let's see how much that will do to the Amoongus. Yeah, that should knock it out. Depending on the we spread, probably. Or maybe it has an obscure item. Okay, so Groudon actually stays in there. Yeah, that does so much. Um, so that Amoongus is definitely um, especially bulky. It has the Rocky Almond though. But um, Water Spout coming out here from Primal Kyogre. Groudon goes down, Amoongus goes down, and Xerneas should be my opponent's last, and we shouldn't have any trouble dealing with that. Actually, getting the critical hit onto the Groudon, wow, that definitely mattered. So, I'm not even sure if, my, if there was anything left my opponent could have done, but probably switching out Groudon could have been something to just get the weather up, but even then, I do have Rayquaza in the back, so... Um, I would have been able to seal the deal. Yeah, we'll just go for Feint and Water Spout, I think. 
because we do have um, a Rayquaza in the back, so even if he went for like Geomancy right there, and I don't know, I don't even know, there was nothing my opponent could do. Yeah, okay, if he went for Geomancy and we went for like, I don't know, there was nothing my opponent could do. But um, yeah, by going for Feint and Water Spout, this battle will speed up a little bit, as Water Spout is enough to pick up the KO on the Bilirinus and giving us the victory. So, what, we went 1-1 one one in today's episode, and um, yeah, first game, I don't know, Dialga is really tough to do with, with this team. Um, Satan was actually able to beat um, Vieira's Dialga, so he, def I mean, he definitely knows what he's doing with that team. But um, yeah, I don't know, it's difficult to take it out, since you don't have any super effective ta attacks um, besides Earthquake, which is what he was running on the Rayquaza. And yeah, you have to just hope that you somehow manage to get off damage against that. So I guess that's it for today's episode. Uh, once again, if you want to follow some of the Japanese players on Twitter, um, there will be some links in the description. I'm not sure how deep I can go with them, but um, yeah, check them out. And have a good day. I hope you had fun with this and see you soon.